My name is Ben Waller. I'm creator and executive producer of Rocket Jump, the show, and the director of Freddy's Vlog. And my name's John Salmon, and I was a cinematographer on uh, six of the eight episodes uh, of Rocket Jump, the show, including Freddy's Vlog. So a few things to look out for when you start on a location scout. You generally want to go out and take a look before you start spending money on cameras and lighting and hiring a big crew. In a perfect world, if you have enough time, the way a location scout should go is like you get there, you talk the basic logistics of shooting there, but then the creative should peel off and talk about how they're going to shoot it with stand-ins or having the AD stand in, whatever it is, take a DSLR and snap a few pics because our department loves that. Like you, you literally take it with stand-ins and you say, I'm looking right here and then they know I can put a sign there, I can build this out. Like this is what my background is. If you really want a strong visual thing, your scout, the more specific you can be on a scout, the less just like, yeah, that'll work the better, honestly. Yeah, all that matters is what's in the frame. So if, if our department thinks that they have to decorate this entire room, but you account for what's actually gonna show up and if right. art and costume and production design, if all those people know exactly what they have to decorate, they can put more effort and time and money into the parts that are gonna show up. Right. If you know you're not gonna look somewhere and, and our department, just because of miscommunication, like dresses an entire part of the room that you're never gonna look at, well, that's just wasting your hardworking crew. There were a lot of sub-locations within a larger stage that we used out in Burbank. The sort of the main building of these stages, and there's this judge's chambers here, which is the bedroom for Freddy's vlog, and then the judge's hallway for the courtroom, which is the Freddy's ascension. Mm. And then there's prison. The prison hallway we reversed and doubled as the lab escape. And yeah. even similar pieces within the same room, just different angles, which was something we discovered on our scout, was that we needed a shot of someone mm -hmm. framed by a window. And the left side of the room had that, and then the right side of the room had exactly what we needed for the mad scientist laboratory. Right. And so we found even on the scout, we could use the same room for multiple purposes. We move into this lab set, and the key here, and this is why this is such a brain game, is like while I'm shooting the prison set, I'm getting my people to work ahead on the lab set, and then work ahead on the office kind of set. Like you're sort of layer taking it throughout the day so that you're never waiting for something to be lit or get ready. That's that's a great example now that I think about it, of, a, of a day where a scout was so important to the AD and having an amazing AD was in, was so important. Andrew Spieler, I have to give him credit, like I don't know how anyone could handle just what a spaghetti knot that day was, you know? Like the crew is moving over to here and then this crew is prepping that and like all these things are sort of always in motion. Moving on guys, oh. moving on guys, moving over to floating bed. That's the thing that increases when you have more people is you need to give more answers. And yeah. if you don't have those, it just becomes frustrating. Yeah, on another shoot on, on Truck Flipper, when we went to go scout a graveyard, there was a time when I was just like, I'm not seeing this visually yet. And I wandered off to go find a shot oh, because it was yeah. just like, it, when there's like 12 people standing there staring at you, it can be really hard mm -hmm. to like be like, Eureka, mm -hmm. I've got it. You know, it's you kind of need to kind of go into your own head and find something really special. And then eventually we did, I was super happy with it. I'm a fan personally of like, you should have shot listed before you go to your location scout and have an idea of how you want to capture it. Because then you kind of come in with your guns loaded and you can look at it and be like, no, wait, actually like that beautiful tree is really awesome. What if we framed it this way instead? But you've already kind of digested the scene once and you know what you're looking for. And that's the worst kind of location scout is you show up and you're just like, well, this is good. I think this will good. This will work, yeah. But like what you want to be doing is being like, no, like the left side of frame is that tree and the right side of frame is like, that stone because we know that we have four people standing here. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, we had an interesting time on Freddy's vlog because our shot list is essentially a list of things that are behind Freddy. Right. And so we had to look at each location. Okay, not, you know, what is the best shot here? What is the best thing that will cover the other 40% of frame that Freddy isn't covering with his face? Right. I remember for me, time of day was a huge thing. Mm -hmm. I think it was like four o'clock when we were looking at all those different yeah. locations in the in the park or something like that. And so I could see the sun is like about to hit the hill over there at like 4.30. And that means we're gonna have a really long magic hour and I can warn Andrew like, this is when we wanna to plan to do this shot and this is when we should be setting up. And, mm -hmm. and I think they're also like outside of light alone, it's really important in terms of orienting the crew as to what you're gonna be doing. Because you just, on a larger production like this, where you have a support team, you can't just show up and be like, actually, let's do it that way. Like literally that, that gives the whole production team nightmares because like because they have to they have to reset their whole thing and and that's how you lose a lot of time like if you come in and you say we're going in this exact order they're going to be fine they'll plan for it when you plan out really effectively by going to location ahead of time at the time you're going to be shooting you set yourself up for a little bit more success because you you know exactly the boundaries in which you can play rather than sort of finding those boundaries on the day 
Yeah. I would have done location scouts way earlier. There was a lot of happy accidents, specifically on Freddy's vlog. There's a location where he's uh, running into the Gorgon Labs to finally destroy them. And there just happened to be a fence on the location that was open. So you get the, the sort of the dynamic action of them crossing a threshold to go into the labs to destroy everyone. And it, it was just like, mm -hmm. we lucked out a lot. Yeah. And I think you can avoid having to luck out by planning ahead earlier. Often on location scouts, I wish that we literally followed a checklist of like, these are the things that we should make sure we discuss. One of the most overlooked ones, honestly, because sound doesn't come on every scout is sound. Yeah. Like, it, are we going to be next to the, a big freeway in the middle of the day? You know, are we in a, literally, this is a serious thing that like big producers look at. Are we in a flight path? Like, are we going to be dealing with like eight planes in a row every day? And is this the kind of scene that can survive that? Or is it an intimate romantic scene where people are whispering, you know? So yeah, we're talking about Freddy's vlog episode four of Rocket Jump the Show on Hulu right now. You can go watch it. Yeah, check it out. If you have any questions at all, please come and ask us in the forums and uh, we'll do our best to answer them as quickly as we can. Uh, you know, we want to help you guys make good films too.